All right, well, thank you, everyone. Good morning. My name is Jessica Hellman. I'm the director of the Institute on the Environment here at the University of Minnesota, or we affectionately call it I on E. You might hear uh, that shortened version of the Institute. And it is my great pleasure to be the first to welcome you to the Midwest Energy Storage Summit. Now, I am a colleague of Ellen Anderson and Barb Jacobs, and so I know firsthand how much this is a labor of love and how much work and dedication they have shown in putting the program together that we have the pleasure of experiencing today. So I know that we're gonna have excellent conversation and interesting conversation. Personally, I'm especially excited about hearing, uh, hearing about changes to the regulatory environment, emerging policies, new technologies, and new business cases for energy storage, among many other topics. And I have just a tiny slice of your time this morning, and I want to share a few thoughts to launch us forward in today's conversation. And first, I have to tell you, I am not an energy storage person. I'm not even an expert in renewable energy. I'm an ecologist, and I have spent my career diagnosing the effects of climate and climate change on natural and human systems. And that has led me to have a deep appreciation for new renewable energy because I know firsthand why it's so important to transition to a clean economy. An economy with dramatically reduced greenhouse gas emissions, and I hope one day an economy that emits zero greenhouse gases. And that would be an economy that both improves the quality of life for people and other living things. It would be not just doing better, but doing well, living well. And I know that to achieve this kind of future, this zero emission future, one that is protective of people and our planet, we need new technology, we need new business models, we need new kinds of thinkers and a new understanding of what our economy can look like. In fact, this idea that we can have a prosperous future, prosperity for people and for other living things and the rest of our planet is the vision of our institute. i &E is dedicated to discovering and realizing the sustainable a sustainable future. That's why we exist. And we do that using the people, the expertise, and the resources of a university, including dedicated professional scholars and all of the young people that we have the extraordinary privilege to train and to mentor, the people of the future, literally. And we believe, in fact, we, we know that that future needs radical, innovative ideas, it needs creative and capable people, and it needs productive relationships to create that prosperous future. I do not think, and my colleagues do not think, that catastrophe from greenhouse gases or other environmental issues is inevitable or unavoidable. However, we also do not think that sustainability is inevitable. We need to discuss, discover, debate, and deliver new ways of doing business, and that's why we are here today. We have to work toward that positive view of the future, and we need the best and brightest on this journey. And fortunately, you all are the best and brightest. This is a room full of people who share this understanding that clean energy is part of a sustainable future. You know that it's key to growing our economy and protecting life as we know it. And you all have essential roles to play in making the renewable energy transition possible. And we do this in a specific location in a specific moment in time. Most of us here live in states with vertically integrated regulated utilities, and we do that, we regulate these utilities as a natural monopoly for the benefit of the public good. But new technologies that promote choice, promote efficiency, and cleaner sources of energy are emerging, and they are changing the energy market. These technologies thus are challenging the regulated utility model, and we need to chart a course that makes room for that good innovation. If we can figure out how to do that, how to update, it, update our regulated utility model here in Minnesota, there are dozens of states that can follow our example. Dominoes, if you will, in the energy transition. So please, put on your thinking caps. Keep an open mind. Dig in through this day today. The path to the future is not transparent. It's 
How to build and store renewable energy is not without disagreement and debate, but I say bring it on. Let's sketch that future and start to build it here today. Thank you for the labor of love that you all bring to your work. Thanks for the radical transformations you cause and for your contribution toward a future where people and planet can prosper together. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna turn this over to our fearless leader, Ellen Anderson. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Jessica. Thank you for your tremendous leadership at the Institute on the Environment. And I'm so grateful to you and to the entire team at INE for helping make this event possible and, and come together. And I'm super excited to see all of you here today. And um, we have 400 seats in this theater and they may well get filled by the time we're done. So welcome to all of you. So I'm gonna try to talk really fast so we try to stay on schedule. I have to start with a, uh, before I do my overview of the day with some quick thank yous for those who really made this event possible. Okay, let's see, let's see, here we go. Our sponsors, thank you so much to our sponsors and I'm sorry you're a bit pixelated there in the middle but we are very, very grateful to your support to again, to make this event possible for us and for all of you to be able to benefit from this incredible array of speakers that we have joining us today. We also wanna be um, very, um, uh, I want to thank publicly the McKnight Foundation, the Energy Foundation, and the Carolyn Foundation for their tremendous support for our work on energy storage in particular. I want to thank my Energy Transition Lab team, Barb Jacobs, who is my rock star. Is she even in the room? There you are. Raise your hand. Um, please, Megan Butler, Eric Jensen. Jan Gersterberger, Kim Long, our interns from Carleton, David McKinley and Max Foster. I mentioned the INE team, today's volunteers led by Channon Lemon, um, who's around here. Many wonderful students volunteering today very quickly. We've got Ben Martin, Dee Dee Kim, Alex Vanning, Lindsay Forsberg, Drew Turo, from, um, Nafama Dampha, Jacob Snyder Hansen, Liz Arnold and Christoph Churchward and Matt Prorock, who's not a student, but used to be. <laughs> I want to thank our special summit advisors who helped us spread the word. Phyllis Reha, Dan Cross, Amy Fredrigill, Jerome Momquist, Beth Soholt, Ralph Jacobson, Matt Prorock, and Chris Villarreal. And finally, we convene the Minnesota Energy Storage Alliance, and I'd like to very um, strongly welcome and thank the members of the Minnesota Energy Storage Alliance. Can you just raise your hands if you've been an active member? Thank you so much for being part of this and helping make, put all this together. Logistics, just a few things. Um, you've already found the restrooms probably. Right outside is the food in the lobby slash gallery and right out that door are restrooms. This is a zero waste event today. There are containers that will be um, for compost and recycling. Um, breakfast is available until 1030, which is when we'll have our, um, that includes our morning break. Please tweet. Um, Let's see, let me go backwards. There's our hashtag Midwest Energy Storage, uh, or, or sorry, Midwest Energy Summit. Midwest Energy Storage. <laughs> um, and in your packet, you should all have a folder with your program in it, and it has cards. So as soon as our first speaker comes up, not me, um, the, next, the, the first real speaker who comes up, you can start writing questions. We have a very tight schedule, as I've mentioned, so we're gonna to try to get some audience questions in with each speaker, but if we run out of time, we hope to get more time at the end to fill in some final questions. So go ahead and write your questions down, and people will come around and collect them at the appropriate time. So, I wanna jump in and just give a few introductory remarks to set the stage today. So, we are the Energy Transition Lab, and what we do is really look to the future. We're trying to discover solutions that will transition us to that future low carbon, flexible, distributed, digitally controlled, customer friendly, reliable and resilient and affordable energy system that our region needs and our whole world needs. And we see energy storage as a game changer and really as a linchpin to that modern energy system. But we also understand it's just one tool of many in the toolbox that's going to get us to that modern energy system and that includes a mix of technology, policy, 
and market transformations. And we hope to talk about all those different aspects today to help reach that future vision. So I can't help but mention those recent hurricanes and storms and disasters that have illuminated our vulnerabilities. Today we hope to illuminate some ways we can weather those storms through the use of exciting technologies like energy storage. So if I could wave a magic wand right now, no one would ever again face a life-threatening heat emergency that would threaten their lives due to a lack of electricity. We know how to prevent that. We know how to provide a truly resilient power system to maintain our quality of life and our critical infrastructure. So what's standing in the way? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today, and we're going to explore all those solutions, barriers, and opportunities. When you registered, you told us that you think the biggest barrier is cost. And um, by the way, all the slides that you see scrolling during breaks are the things that you said, your feedback during registration. Um, so you talked about cost. We are super excited to have the US DOE's energy storage guru, Dr. Gyok here, to speak about implementing energy storage projects that pay for themselves. And also to hear Argonne Labs, Dr. Crabtree and his bold vision for research that will lead to significant cost reductions in energy storage as the technology is evolving and improving. By the way, I have to mention that energy storage is now cost effective. Newsflash in Minnesota and the Midwest in many cases. Sorry, Barb, I'm a little over time. Um, and breaking news that Conexus, our largest distribution co-op in Minnesota, is about to finalize and begin building soon. Um, what will be the largest solar plus storage project in the Midwest. And we're very, very excited about that. Stay tuned. Um, we also know that our regulatory system doesn't quite accommodate or properly value many of the assets that energy storage can provide, like resiliency, like peak demand reduction, and optimization of renewable energy resources. We know that policy matters and that we need the right market signals. And so today we have keynote speeches from MISO, we have the National Energy Storage Association. We have distinguished uh, public utility commissioners. And we have other policy experts to really try to make sense of all these policy and regulatory issues. We also know, as, as Jessica mentioned, that these transformational changes are going to challenge our traditional utility and energy business models and planning decisions. And so I'm super excited that we have two rock stars of the utility world, Mary Powell of Green Mountain Power and Chris Clark of XL Energy with us today. And finally, we know that reaching this energy transition future that we're striving for has to address our greatest challenge of carbon emissions and decarbonization. So we have to understand how to maximize the benefits of this transition without putting more greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere. We're thrilled to welcome many of you from across the Midwest to Minneapolis today to focus on what we have in common. So just a couple more caveats about, or sort of explanation about who we are. We are the university. So we want to discover and analyze answers and solutions but we don't hold all the answers. We welcome very diverse perspectives today, both in the audience and among our spectators, so don't expect everyone to agree with each other. And you know what the future holds is a matter that we really need to talk about and understand and discuss. And we intentionally brought together a combination of perspectives on policy and regulatory issues, on research, and on implementation. And I just have to say for my friends, uh, where's Steve, there we go. There's lots of kinds of energy storage and we're not gonna probably get into everyone in detail, but just to rattle off a few, it's not just about batteries, community scale storage like hot water heaters, pumped hydro, lots of other innovative ideas that like hydrogen ammonia and underground bladders in Lake Superior with compressed air. Ultimately, we don't have time to cover every detail today, but we'll do our best to give you a good picture of the landscape and to know that ultimately storage will play a role in a transformed grid that integrates things like electrified transportation and other sectors. But today, 
It's only a short sna snapshot. So what you don't hear up at the podium, make sure you grab people and connect with them during our breaks because we have a real brain trust of experts and visionary leaders in this room today. So take advantage of their presence and get to know people.